Um, if you, I know your, your time is limited, so I want to start with our first question. Um, now, uh, my first EMR implementation uh, that time with PowerChart, it was year 2001. Uh, we start our relationship with uh, that formerly known Cerner uh, with PowerChart in May 2000. And of course, you know, uh, I have probably done so many uh, EMR transitions, implementations in the outpatient settings. And our goal was always to uh, see if this is going to help our providers to um, kind of uh, alleviate some of the administration uh, work that they do right now, or they did in the past. So now we have uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, feedback that we get from everyone uh, who are utilizing EMR. And I have my own opinion on some of these, but knowing so, uh, Oracle is already uh, putting a lot of work into this, uh, how, uh, how is Oracle integrating these technologies into the EHR system that is going to make change in the healthcare provider's life and then maybe change the provider? Uh, providers diagnose and treat patients. How do you see that? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. But let me start with <clears throat> the problem that we're trying to solve, right? So, you know, just to kind of back you up, three years ago, Oracle made <clears throat> one of the largest uh, acquisitions in healthcare, and that mm -hmm. was the acquisition of, of Cerner. And I think at that time, Larry, it was you know right after on the heels of COVID, right? And I think it it kind of further demonstrated to him. Mm -hmm. a lot of the core dysfunction that we all feel in healthcare, right? Whether you're a provider or a patient. And I think during COVID, that was, you know, front page news every single day. And I think we all experienced and it kind of, I think it was more highlighted during that time. And Larry's been thinking about healthcare for many, many years, right? We have a large footprint in um, life sciences where we do clinical trials. So Oracle Health has done that for a while. But I think at that time after COVID, he wanted to do more and really kind of thought about his career and everything that he's done. And he spent a lot of time in technology and transformed a lot of industries. And then it was, let's come to healthcare. Let's bring everything that, that he's learned or the, the company has learned through databases, through, you know, whether it's human resources systems, whether it's through transforming other industries and mm -hmm. communications, restaurants and hospitality. And let's try to transform healthcare. Now, lots of people have said that, right? It's almost kind of a buzzword when we hear about that. Everyone's transforming healthcare. But what I think is different about Oracle is that they do come to it with a mission, a mission orientation, right? And Larry says, I can't think of a better way to end my career than trying to help healthcare. So we start with that. And we come to it with the notion that Solving healthcare has significant implications, not only around for doctors and for patients, but for countries at large. So in my former role, I was the administrator of CMS. So there wasn't a healthcare issue problem that I didn't have to deal with at some point in, at, you know, during my, my tenure there. And what I found was that, um, you know, we're spending so much money in healthcare, whether it's in the United States or with countries around the world. And yet for that investment, you know, we have poor health status overall as compared to other ind industrialized countries. Um, in the United States, we have poor, uh, poor health out outcomes. We're also spending a lot more money on administrative costs. So 25 to 30% of the mm -hmm. healthcare dollars spent on administrative costs. And at the end of the day, people aren't very happy, right? There is a lot of mm -hmm. growing dissatisfaction with the healthcare system. And I think doctors and nurses, and everybody's frustrated. Um, and let me, I'll be the first one to say technology is not going to solve all of these problems, but there's a lot that we can do. I think it's also fair to say that technology hasn't exactly served the healthcare industry well. And if we look at the tools and the things that, that our workforce is using today, a lot of them are antiquated. I mean, it's fair to say that in parts of the healthcare system mm -hmm. across the country, we're still using fax machines. Right. And relying on very outdated technology, and I would say almost outdated user experiences, right? It's super easy to, you know, go shopping. It's super easy to do all kinds of banking, all kinds of transactions mm. that are very easy to do. But then when we come to healthcare, the experience and the interfaces that we have are, are, are antiquated. And that's, and that's because 
the the uh, EMRs that were built, mm-hmm. both Cerner and, and our competitor, they were built in the 1990s. So they, this is old technology. And it's hard with old technology to adopt new modern innovation. It takes longer. It's harder. It's, you know, you're bolting on things into to an old infrastructure. And so when we come at it from Oracle, we looked at the Cerner infrastructure and our focus now is to build a brand new EMR, the EHR of the future. This is an EMR that is going to, to have artificial intelligence embedded at the core layer. And so it allows providers to use automation, to use AI as a tool to help them reduce a lot of the manual burden. It also gives them the opportunity to use AI to help them in clinical decision support. Now, I'm the first one to say AI is not going to replace the provider, not mm-hmm. at all, but it is a tool. It's a, it's a great tool for them, right? If you think about it, we like to say that the EMR, instead of being a mm-hmm. Um, a record, right? A record of information. It is now a system of intelligence. And it's almost like having an assistant, not a, you know, a, a, an, an administrative assistant, but more like your best resident at your, at your side. So you can ask it questions like, tell me, you know, what's the recommended dosage for this? What are the interactions? Those types of things that a lot of times providers are having to look up, they're having to recall, and things are happening so fast in medicine. There's so much innovation going on that you need to have that information at your fingertips, whether you're at a, a big, large academic health center or you're in a small rural facility. We want to also bring more tools to the table that help actually lift um, quality of care and so that we have more consistency in quality no matter what setting you're in. So I would say that's one of our, our ma- major focuses. And then that first one is around reducing burden. And I think we've already started to see in the market a lot of ambient listening tools where you can go in and listen to your um, conversation and for the provider generates the note. But what's even more exciting is now take it from there. They could do autonomous coding and the AI can actually, you know, conduct the entire workflow that makes the doctor be able to focus on what doctors are best doing, right? Which is diagnosing and figuring out the treatment plan, Mm -hmm. not having to do all this mundane work. So we hope by reducing a lot of the, the burden, I would say the administrative burden for doctors and for nurses, it gives them more time with patients. And that really helps address the access issues that we're having. It's kind of getting hard to make a doctor's appointment these days. Mm-hmm. Um, and then secondarily, I think we help the workforce. You know, we're hearing that people are retiring early and they're frustrated because of all this burden. And I think this will help bring back the joy to the practice of medicine. So that's our, that's our overall goal.